Hello, I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold and you're not. Remember the two rules. If you want to say something, raise your hand and don't raise your hand. Uh, today, this is class one for under 1400 and in many instances, way under 1400. Know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, so I decided to look at six Morphe games, but before I do that, I want to have a discussion. Occasionally, when you play chess with somebody, it's not close. Let me give you an example. Let's say you go play tennis with your friend and you win every point. You're good and they're not. It's not that fun, is it? Or vice versa. They win every point and you get zero points. Or you play basketball with your friend and your friend's six feet tall and then they make every shot. You miss every shot. That's not fun either. Okay. Now, in chess, we have the same problem. For example, let's say I played you. Right? Yeah. Then I probably win. And when I say probably, I mean definitely. And when I say definitely, I mean repeatedly. And when I say I ran over your dog, I mean your son. And I mean repeatedly. Okay. Don't sue me the Simpsons. Anyway, so what we used to do, which they don't do too much anymore, but they used to do it, is they would play odds games. They would say, well, I'm going to beat you every game. So, before the game starts, I'll just take my rook off the board. That way, maybe I won't beat you every game, because I have no rook. Then if I beat you every game, maybe I'll take my queen off. Okay, then maybe I won't beat you every game, etc. So some of these games are odds games, because Morphe was too good. And some of these games were blindfold games, where Morphe didn't look. And then they told Morphe the moves, and he's like, yeah, you already know. Morphe. Okay, and basically he played two different kinds of people in this class. Rufus Doofus. and Doofus. Okay, oh. so the first game, let's look at the first game. Now, you may notice something interesting. What did you notice that's generally not something you would notice? Anybody? The rook is not there. The rook is not there. So Morphe's like, look dude, you're not very good. I'll just take my rook off when we start. And the guy's like, sweet. Okay, but that didn't really help. Now, let me give some advice so you guys play better chess. When you're ahead of rook, that means you're winning. You're ahead of rook. Then you want as boring as possible. Then you're up a rook. Or there could be checkmate for everybody. Then your extra rook doesn't matter much. So in this game, white sacrifices his pieces and black's king is terrible. That's not good when you're up a rook. You want your king to be safe. One of the issues Morphe's opponents had is their king wasn't safe, and Morphe went rawr. Okay, it was the first instance of somebody going rawr. Okay, okay. So e4, e5. Every, everybody's happy. Okay, and Morphe played a gambit. He wants to get his pieces out and open the position. Oh, the king's down. Gambit. Yeah. This should be for check. More gambiting. Castles. And Black took that pawn, which I wouldn't do. If I was black, I would get my knight out and try to castle. I'm already up a rook. I don't really care about a pawn. And this helps white develop his pieces. So now, white has three minor pieces out and he castled. Black has two minor pieces out and he can't castle. And white has a very big threat. If it was white's turn, what would he do? Yeah, and then black would cry like a grandmaster. Okay, so black played bishop back to f8. Following my rule, always play bishop f8. Now, you'd like to play knight f6, which is what I would play, and probably he was afraid of e5, and he's like, now what do I do? Because his knight's attacked. Then if you go here, now I'm threatening checkmate and your knight. So there's some issues. But generally, you don't want to undevelop. You want to develop your pieces, get them out. So bishop f8, that's not good. Oh, blunder? Yeah, I don't like that move. Um, okay, e5. Okay. That sort of prevents knight f6. d6. d6 is a bad move, but I don't know what to suggest. Probably we should move the... Well, then he plays e6. I don't know. I resign. So here, with this pawn here is good for black. This pawn disappears. See how I made it disappear? Then white plays rookie one check, and black's like, why didn't I castle yet? So d6, I don't like that move because now it gets to black's king. Rook e1. 
Boy, now I'd be scared if I was black. This Rook not being here, that doesn't seem to matter very much. Yeah, because yeah. anyway. We got we got everything going on over here. Anyway, Paul Murphy is way too good, so he doesn't right. even need that one. That's right. And also, we're on move nine, because I said so. See? And, and Black got one piece out. Yeah. Terrible. Okay, so no, Black took the pawn. He's hoping to trade queens. And Morphe's like, okay, let's trade queens. Because I'm going to checkmate you. Okay, and the guy's like, great. And Morphe plays check. And now... The guy made two mistakes in a row. You should make zero mistakes in a row. That's less. Right? It's king e7. Right, that's what he did. King d8 Not would be... King now, he didn't play king to d8 because white would take the queen with check. So he figured I'll take the queen without check. Now, Karen just walked in. She may have noticed, although I doubt it, but she might have, that there's no rook here. Isn't that weird there's no rook there? Mm -hmm. How did black take that rook? The answer is, you ready to be surprised? Mm -hmm. He didn't. Now she's more confused. Before the game started, Morphe said, yeah, I don't need that. Mm. Yeah, because he's playing you know, Rufus and Doofus. Okay, so King E7. Now, something you've never heard of, double check. You're yeah. supposed to complain and say you've heard of it. Actually, I already heard of it. Yeah, there you go. You can play a little better next time. Okay, so Morphe played Knight G6 double check. Now, if anybody good was black, anybody, like Grandmaster, IM, FM, Master, uh, Expert, A player, then they wouldn't play this terrible move that black played. Now, whenever you're in check by two pieces, there's a rule. You have to move. You have to move your king. Unless you can't take both pieces. Yeah. can't unless, block both pieces. Unless your king was surrounded by two rooks, but they were too close and you could capture but people don't want to do that. So I, I have a question. What? Okay. So here, black has four legal moves. One, two, three, four. And once again, black was assuming white was going to play rook takes queen. Pretty good assumption. And obviously, if your king goes here, then that would be check. And after rook takes queen check, then I could take your rook. So then white's taking a lot of stuff. That's that's a lot. Take a queen and a rook. Rawr. Okay. So he decided he was going to win the game. He said, I'll take the bishop, you'll take my queen, and I'll take the knight. And then I win, which is correct. Except white doesn't take the queen. In fact, in this position, white also didn't take the queen. White played double check. And after taking the bishop, which is a blunder, how did Morphe win the game? Knight e five. No. Rook E7 check. Rook E7 double check. Oh yeah. Okay. Because White's king is in check. Then you'd have to call Karen over as the 4 TD. Uh, and Karen would be like, wait, what? What's happening? Why are both kings in check? Wait, and then Karen legal? would try to get an adult. Oh yeah. And she'd say, what's happening? No. Is that legal? No, because the rook is hidden. I forgot. Yeah, you can't do that. And also, and, and, if it was legal, Black has 7,000 ways to capture that rook. So I don't like that move. Also, I can play king takes knight. Also, king. Also, bishop takes rook. Checkmate. You with the right answer. Knight h8 checkmate. Bam, and the game's over because it's mate. Confusing the class. Yeah, because the the king can. Oh, now I see. It. The, yeah. And by the way. There was a guy in here who was pretty high rated. I'm going to say 1,600, approximately. Yeah. Approximately. And he asked me, not this position, but some other position. 1,600, higher than all of you, too high for this class. He wanted to know, he was serious. This is a serious question. He said, well, the rook can't go here, as we found out, because it's pinned. Yeah. So he wanted to know if you can make a move like that, because the rook can't take the king, because the rook is pinned. No. But kings, but you are not supposed to take the king. Right. So you, can black go here? Is that allowed? No. No. And plus, the rook is not even overworked. What? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, you can't do that. And he was like, are you sure? Because the rook's pinned. And I was like, I'm sure. Okay. So that's checkmate, and the game ended.
So black made a really bad move here. King takes bishop. If he plays the right move, moving his king here, let's see what the engine says. It says, you know, about equal. So Morphy was down a rook when the game started, and after the right move, they're back to about equal. That's not good for black. Man, when you're up a rook on move one, and it's equal on move 12, that's yeah, harsh. So he would have lost anyway, but he would have had a good position, just not for one. Can I see the red light go on? What? No. Okay, next game. Go Morphe. Now here, Morphe's playing Morphe, confusing the class. Because? Yeah. Morphe's dad and uncle were both good at chess. That's yeah, how he and, learned chess. And he's playing his dad. Well, maybe. I forgot if that's his dad or his uncle. Nobody knows. I mean, you guys at home know. I don't know. Okay, so they played with no odds. They just played regular chess. So black didn't last very long. Okay, we still play this way today, right? Looks like this normal chess. This is like chess. a two-match Italian variation. <laughs> yeah. And he played the Evans Gambit, which was very popular in the 1800s. Very popular. Not so popular now. However, two players that some of you have heard of, Gary Kasparov and Vishy Anand. Yeah, I know these. Yeah? John Ond is from India. Correct. They had this position about 15 years ago, and Kasparov was white, and he won. And Ray Robson, who's like number six or seven in the U.S., he plays the Evans Gambit. And in the U.S. Championship, Hikaru Nakamura played the Evans Gambit and won Hikaru about six years ago. So oh, they, still, they still play it occasionally. Hikaru Nakamura. Exactly. What you say? And, and the last... And, and, Hikaru Nakamura was still a baby he here, and he went to the last position. He would play. He would say God got terrible for white. I mean black, because white is Paul Morphy in the last position. I have a question. What? Okay. So there's an episode of Futurama, which none of you have seen, where they're on a planet controlled by women. There's no men on the planet. Then. The head of the planet is a computer, but it's a, a female computer. What? Yeah. So they go to the computer to see what to do about the in intruders. And then Bender finds out it's not a computer. It's a, it's a fembot. It's a robot that's pretending to be a computer. And when he finds that out, he's like, why are you doing this? And she says, do you know how hard it is to be a fembot pretending to be a femputer in a woman's world? And he says, what? Yeah, he's a robot. Okay, so I always say what? Good, good job, Nick. Okay, so he took the pawn. Actually, you don't have to take the pawn. You can retreat like a Frenchman. <laughs> and they were in New Orleans, so... Okay, now C3. Yeah, because yeah. New Orleans was owned by France, then Spain, and then it passed to America. Uh, okay. Yeah, what? actually, that's true. I mean, I was a history major. I don't know what he's talking about. All right, Bishop C5. D4. That's why white sacks a pawn. White has a pretty nice center. Yeah, okay. he's attacking the pawn. Yeah, and he yeah. took and played bishop b6. That's not a good idea. Yeah. You're going to take, you should play bishop b4 check. Also, you yeah. shouldn't take. You should, yeah. Okay, and then he castled. So white's down a pawn, but that's pretty good center. Pretty good. Yeah, because... Knight a5. Boo! Blunder! Yeah, that's not a good square for the knight. And Morphe saw his bishop was attacked. And so did the other Morphe. Okay, now, in 1849, that's when Britney Spears started getting popular, right? The kids were like, who's that? And unfortunately, Black said, oops, I did it again. In the last game, White's pawn was on E5, and Black played D6 and opened up the E file for White's rook. Now, a rule that you want to follow for all of you when one side castled and one side didn't castle, which basically has to happen. Because if I castle and you haven't moved yet, then you haven't castled. Unless you already castled, then I didn't castle. So if both sides castle in a game or one side castles, there's always a position where one side castled and one didn't. The only way there's not is if neither side ever castles ever, which is impossible. When that happens, which is happening right now, who wants the center open, white or black? White. White wants it open because black's king is in the center. So should black open the center? 
No. Uh, but he opened the center. Annual. And this was 1849. Now, as I've said in many lectures, Morphy doesn't get a lot of credit for being the greatest player ever because his opponents were suspicious. Like when Carlson beats Kramnik and Anand and Karyakin and Topolov, they're like, wow, you beat some good players. And when Morphy wins, they're like, man, your opponent's terrible. So, yeah, and yeah. Hikaru Nakamura won, not Miss Carlson. But Did he take him home? Well, Hikaru Nakamura won, not Miss Carlson before, but it was tricks by 60, not regular chess. Okay. All right, so D5, not a good move. He takes it, opening up the E file. And then he plays Bishop A3. Uh, Why did White play Bishop A3? Why? You. So he couldn't cast it. Yeah, he's protecting F8, so now it's hard to castle. Also, yeah, because F breaks the rules. Exactly. Okay, so Bishop E6, maybe he'll castle this way. There we go. Knight C3, better not castle now, your queen's attacked. So he moved it. And now he could castle, except it's not his turn. And White's like, I don't want you to castle. And, 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 and Black's like, Paul, I am your father. And he's like, no. Okay. So White sacrificed material so Black couldn't castle. Now, there's a family that I know pretty well. We'll call them Karen and Archer. Okay. Karen likes to be up material. She's up a rook. She's up a queen. And she's like, all right. Okay. Pretty happy about that. Archer doesn't really care. Archer's like, here's a pawn. Here's a pawn. Whatever. And then you're up three or four pawns and he mates you. And then you're like, dang. Okay, he must have learned that from Morphe, because Morphe did that a lot. Morphe's like, you can be up two or three pawns, and I checkmate you, and then he's like, darn. So how did he give up a pawn and stop Black from castling? Gotta make a threat. Anybody? Um, so... D5. D5, yeah, attacking the bishop. Although, frankly, you could castle here. Then if I take your bishop, you take my bishop. Although... The pawn gets to f7, that's going to be unfortunate. Yeah, that's okay, so he took... Oh, that's why Morphe doesn't get a lot of credit, because, you know, that's no good. And then... Rookie one check. Now the truth hurts. Morphe actually beat his father. Exactly. Yeah, now I, I resign. And then... Not only do I resign, Black resigned. Really? Because, yeah. Because Queen A4 check is a winning move. Well, I don't know if that's why, but something. Yeah. All right. So somebody suggests a move. I dare you. Good luck. D8. King D8. I agree. Now, if I simply attack your queen, like, let's say that way. Notice how it's attacked twice, right? Yeah. So you may trade queens? I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, man, the truth hurts. Check. It's going to hurt a lot. Yeah, and then check me. Yeah. yeah, white white's pieces are pretty good. Blacks are not not good. And yeah. black is on. And so after rookie one check, the computers would give some crazy number confusing the audience. Okay. Yeah. It's so even though white is down two pawns, white's up plus a billion. Yeah, because white's gonna win that queen. Yeah, so he resigned. He said, yeah, Okay, so, I give up. Yeah. So more and then Paul he said, Murphy, I have no son. What's that? And Paul, Paul Murphy is better than his father Alonzo. Well, yeah. yeah he's better, he was better than his father. Okay, next. Now, this is one of my favorite Morphe games. Morphe's actually black. And they play Karen's favorite opening. What did black play here, as Karen would play? E6. Yeah, there you go. French defense. Okay, now in 1850, everybody was playing E4, E5, like it was a kid's tournament. But Morphe's like, whatever. It was the first time that was ever said with the finger waving, was Morphe did it. Yeah, it's true. Okay, so White played the advanced variation. Karen, what's that? Uh, E5. Yeah, and they played normal normal chess. That's how they play, yeah. Okay, F4, nobody plays F4 nowadays, possibly because of this game. Okay, in chess, you should develop your pieces in castle, yeah. unless you're playing Morphe, then they don't do any of that, and then Morphe wins. So knight f3 is the normal move. Very normal. Yeah. Developing your knight, getting closer to castling, and defending this pawn. f4 doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Now, this opening, it's very common to attack this pawn. 
you play queen b6, and you got all these guys on it, then you put your knight on f5, and then white's like, man, my pawn's attacked a lot. So f4, that doesn't, that's not helping. Yeah, because it blocks your bishop. Also blocks your bishop, okay. Bishop d7, developing a piece. I think it's because it blocks your bishop so people don't play that move. That's right. Now, white has a problem. You'd like to get your pieces out. But he has none. Okay, but if you move this bishop, you lose this pawn. If you move this knight here, you lose this pawn because you're blocking your queen. If you move this guy here, you lose this pawn. So you, you got to do something. So he played a3, not a good move. Again, Morphe's opponents didn't develop their pieces too much. Probably bishop e2 was the right move, then try to castle. Okay, a3, knight h6, he wants to go to f5. Yeah. Sometimes when they play knight h6, the bishop takes it, but you can't because pawn's on f4. You with some crazy comment. How do you know which way to castle? For which side? Um, Here you mean? Well, here it's obvious because he can he can castle. Yeah, white's not castling queenside because it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well for black, black castles both ways in this opening. Depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I think this game he didn't castle. So. Yeah. That showed you. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and that and that's a and the knight moves to h six. The bishop can take it. Sometimes, but not now. Yeah, because the pawn is there. So right. That's another and, reason why people didn't. Right, and the that. problem with knight e7, with also the intention of playing knight f5, is you're blocking your bishop. So now if white takes the pawn on c5, black has to take with the queen and start moving his queen around. Now, if you take the pawn on c5, it take with the bishop. Yeah. Okay, so for some reason, Morphe has four pieces out. His opponent has one. Four is more than one. Four is like a billion more than one. About a billion, yeah. Okay, b4. Why move a piece when you keep moving your pawns? Takes. Rook c8. Morphe gets another piece out, putting the rook on the open line. The now, white could get in trouble because white's defending this with his queen and defending this with his queen. So he better watch it. Yeah, because it's overworked. Yeah, and we got all of our pieces out. Rawr. Yeah. Okay. And black is this should be two. Not defending the deep now now we can't take the bishop and when they defended the pawn the guy got a piece out okay now morphe seeing my emote on switch went raw in this position okay scaring the audience knight f5 queen d3 and then bishop takes b4 check so queen d3 loses the game but i don't know what to suggest because he's probably worried about 93. Rawr. 93? Probably worried about that. I'd be worried about that. So he stopped it. And then he went here, sacrificing a piece. And white said, thank you. And black said, you're welcome. Now we're threatening the queen. You agree. And knight c2 check isn't bad either. And now he made another mistake, although I don't know what to suggest. Resigns. I don't know. Where, where can I move the queen? What do I do? Anybody? Help. Man, quiet class. They're like, I don't know. Um, queen a3? Queen a3? And that's a sort of a royal family triple quadruple fork. Oh. Yeah, the truth hurts. <gasps> yeah, he was like, wait. If you play queen b3, it's the same thing. It's check and your queen. Yeah. So, so the truth hurts. Notice Black's head. pieces are all doing something. White's what? pieces, no. So he retreated, d2. Now most of you would fork and take the rook, but actually has a better fork. Um, made the rook there? Rook c2, the truth hurts. Yeah. Defended by the knight. Where can I move that queen where it's safe? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can. Well, just and, and if the queen fork. captured, we would fork again and get the rook. I agree with a lot of that. Not all of it, but a lot of it. So what do you do? D1. Queen D1. Now again, most of you would say, like, well, there's a bishop. I'll take it. But Morphe's like, professional athlete. I want more. Oh, um. Yeah, exactly. So he played... What that guy in the back said. Mm. Damn. 
Bam. It's oh, good. It's White's mainly set up for the next game. The knight, then the knight's attacking the queen. The queen has a lot of good squares. But none of that. Wait, whose turn is it? Exactly. It's White's turn. Oh. Exactly. Did you want to play White? Uh, no. No. If it was Black's move, what? Right. Yeah, if it was Black's move, he'd probably die of a heart attack. Can't believe how good his position is. <laughs> yeah. And White obviously gave up. Well, let's see what the engine says. It says, Rawr! Yeah, it says I resign. Yeah. So even though Black's down a piece for two pawns, it says he's up a queen. Man, the truth hurts. Yeah. Okay. So Morphe was good. Play like that. Instead of playing pawn here, pawn here, pawn here, pawn here, pawn here, pawn here, queen d3, queen d2, queen d1, maybe you should like move a different piece every move and have them all active. You with some comment. So what was Morphe's biggest rating? They didn't have ratings back then. They just said, wow, you're good. See, this will surprise you. In 1850, they didn't have computers. Yeah. Also, in 1850, they didn't have cars. They didn't have airplanes. I know. If we know their records could be... Oh, yeah, they, could, they estimate the ratings, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, Morphe's opponents were pretty suspicious. I think... And... That's how Morphe played chess and didn't get a lot of credit. Right, but Morphe played perfect. Everybody else played terrible. Yeah. How did one guy play perfect? He, Where'd he come he's, from? He's probably better rated than Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, now let me ask you a question that will confuse the class. Let's say Morphe was never born, okay? Between 1840 and 1870, who was the best player in the world? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Bobby Fish isn't there yeah, because he's, he's in the Nike hunter. What? He died when he was 30? Well, I just randomly made up years. You know, he, he quit chess when he was like in his 20s. He didn't play anymore. Well, maybe he's just so good. He died when he was like 40, but... Yeah, he... Yeah, he... Yeah. No, but I mean, who, who name somebody good. Yeah, right. The f most famous person in the 1800s, who's not Morphe, is Steinitz. But Steinitz... Like, got really good when Morphe already stopped playing, and they met, but they didn't play. People wanted him to play, and then Morphe would have crushed him, because <laughs> they have one opponent in common. They played often, Adolf Anderson. Adolf Anderson, over his career, had a plus score against Steinitz. More, uh, against Morphe, Morphe's like plus 20. Yeah, Morphe just destroyed Anderson. Anderson was as good as Steinitz, uh, very suspicious. Yeah. Okay. Adolf Anderson was pretty good. He might have been the best player in the world if Morphe was never born at that time. Okay, next. Bobby Fischer okay, was... Now here, Morphe's... No, Bobby Fischer was born 100 years later. Yeah, okay. exactly. Now, here Morphe, as you will notice, is playing no name. He didn't want his name known because he got beat so bad. Also, if we go down here where my arrow's going, there's no rook. Okay, they played the fried liver, which I can't play, I'm a vegan. Okay, now, when you're a rook up in the opening, you shouldn't have your king walk up the board. Also, you should never have your king walk up the board, but that's different. Is this supposed to be two knights Italian, Mary? Two knights, that's right. Two knights Italian? Yeah, shouldn't play knight f6 when you're up a rook. You shouldn't let the guy play knight g5. Now, in a lot of kids' tournaments, they don't know what to do here, and they just let white do that. Okay, but, okay, you're supposed to play d5. And in this position, oh. grandmasters play knight a5, attacking the bishop. Two knights defense. Right. And you could also play knight d4, it's possible. But they took this, which nobody plays nowadays, and then white sacrificed his knight. Uh. And black's like, alright. And then check, notice, we're forking the king and the knight. Now, for safety reasons, Black should retreat. And just, you know, he lost the F pawn. Okay. But he saved his knight. And with this rook on A1, this is a normal position. Without the rook, even though White's down a rook and sacked a piece, he has a big attack against Black's king. This rook isn't really joining the attack. That doesn't really matter. Now, I have a rule for my students, and you're my students. When something is pinned, you should attack it again. P putting pressure on the Notice how it's pinned because I said so. Putting pressure on the Right. So what did he do? 
Knight, two, C, three, putting pressure on right. And black doesn't want to lose his knight. And he can't protect it with any of these guys. So he just protected it with that. So he did. Okay, and Morphe castled. The guy protected it again, C6. Now, in the previous games we looked at, when Morphe was white, there was a king on the e-file. There was a pawn on a pawn on the e-file for somebody, and Morphe made that pawn go away, or his opponent did. Notice there's a pawn here, and no, Morphe would like that pawn to go away. On the first game, the e-file pawn was yeah. Morphe's. Yeah. So he played d4. He's like, that pawn has to go away. Yeah, and the yeah, guy's yeah. like, my name's NN, no problem. Like, I, don't, I don't need that. Now, Grandmaster wouldn't take that pawn and open up his gang, but. Uh, and so check. Yeah, that was a yeah. wonder. And then he kept taking on d5 because he's mean. Okay, and now black really blundered. Question? Okay, so it's better to do that bef before rather than going rookie one first. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah, because you're hoping he takes, you get rookie one with tempo. Yeah. Rookie one's okay, but this is quicker. Okay. Well, taking on d4 is ill-advised. Opening up his king, not good. Yeah. Okay. And this is all, and he can't take the bishop, but he did. Okay. Now, we have to play bishop to d6, because I said so. But he played here. That's a blunder. Okay. And Morphe gets his last piece into the game. Check. Yeah. Now, it's, it's the truth hurts. Now he blundered again. He has to play king b6. And then, I don't know, maybe maybe black's okay, maybe. Suspicious. Yeah. But he should play king b6. But he blundered bishop d6 because he obviously missed the next move. Obviously. He uh, saw the next move, he wouldn't have played bishop d6. Yeah, but the next move was queen to d6, queen takes d6 checkmate. Well, there's a black queen on d8. Oh yeah. So that would just trade queens and you cry like a grandmaster. Oh yeah. Um rook to e6. I mean e7. Then the black queen would take it again. Oh. Truth um, hurts. C5. Queen. Yeah, queen c5 because the bishop's pinned. Yeah. Pin pin pieces aren't really doing the job they're looking like they're doing. That's right. And black has two legal moves, because I said so. That's one legal move, and then mate. So that's good for white. Yeah. So he played the other legal move. King b8. And now everything's mate. You could take with the queen or the bishop. Mate. Mate. It's yeah. Mate. Yeah. So black did really well that game. He didn't move any of these pieces. Very suspicious. Did move his king a lot. Yeah, but Morphe's down a lot and he won. Right, that's because Morphe uses all of his pieces to attack. Yeah. Some he, kids, when they're in a kid's tournament, they're like, ooh, I move my queen every move. Horrible. Terrible. Okay, and the last two games are odds games, or, less, or they're not. I mean, they're not. Okay. So this wasn't an odds game. This was a blindfold game. So Morphe didn't look, because that would be cheating. Because so, it was a blind... Dirtful. Yeah, Morphe played blindfold. His opponent did not. Okay. This is a blindfold yeah. turn. They played a French defense, but he played the Sicilian. So then they played some other opening. Yeah, crazy. Morphe played very aggressively. Okay, and then bishop check. Rawr. Right, c3. Notice, Morphe moves a different piece every move, activating all of his pieces, even when he can't see. Oh, he's blindfolded? Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, we've seen this before in previous games, and this is a really good example. Okay. In the previous games, Morphe was trying to attack down the E line, and somebody had a pawn there, so we got rid of it. Well, we can't attack down the E line here, because both sides have a pawn on the E line. We can't attack on the D line, but there's a pawn there. And that's called a clearance sacrifice. So how did Morphe get rid of his d-pawn? D6. D6. And in fact, if we go back, if a grandmaster was black, they would realize d6 was good, so they would play bishop to d6. And then that pawn's blocked forever. The backwards yeah. pawn. That's what a grandmaster would do. Yeah, well, it's a passed pawn. But. Yeah, but grandmasters weren't that good this time. Yeah, and exactly. Alexander Buford wasn't good. Exactly. He was meek. You know, later he inherited the earth. Well, mm -hmm. actually, what? 
What? What did you say? Who? I said later he inherited the earth. What? You. If someone's blindfolded, does that mean someone tells them the move? Yeah, and then they tell the guy the moves and they make it. Uh, yeah. yeah, and but how about if he said, I already know. Exactly, and you were listening. So he played D6. Now, if a grandmaster was black, he would play bishop f8 and say, like, man, why did I play bishop e7? Okay. But you should play bishop d6 here. Yeah. But he took, because that's what they did back then. And Morphe castled. And the truth hurts. The, the rook is on the same line as the queen. Yeah, what do you think of this position? Black's losing. Black is so losing yeah. that, that he gave up. It's probably a billion. It's a lot. I haven't looked, but it's at least Let's 10. Just why doesn't he just castle? And the truth hurts. Yeah. Rise up a bill. Well, then I take your bishop. bishop. Right. Well, he resigned. Mm -hmm. uh, like if Carlson was playing Aronian and they lost a bishop, they would resign. You agree? That's yeah. But yeah, you can't. You can't. Blindfolded against me. Oh yeah. Well, it, it, he sees the board better than you do. It doesn't matter. I could play several games blindfolded at the same time. Murphy's better than me, so he didn't care about that. He has really brilliant games where he's playing blindfold simultaneous. Yeah, he don't care about that. Have you ever done that? Yeah, I've played six at the same time. Blindfold? Non sequitur. Yeah. Well, you think I teach this class because I'm lucky? All right, I am lucky. Yesterday I did a 12-hour stream. Mm -hmm. I played 135 games. I lost four. That's a pretty good rating. Reasonable. <laughs> Not great. One of the games I lost, I had 7,000 pieces. My opponent had a pawn, and I didn't take it, and my time ran out. <laughs> yeah, I could have taken it like eight moves in a row and I was trying to mate him. Mm -hmm. The other game I drew, I drew one. I had 400 pieces. I gave them all away on purpose to be with Bishop and Knight. And I do that like every game. So I made Bishop and Knight like a fourth of the games. <laughs> and I do it in like five seconds. And I didn't do it. And my time ran out. Oh, no. The other three games I just lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then like 130 wins. Were you playing Rufus and Doofus? Uh? Ooh, man, they wish they were Rufus and oh, Doofus. Yeah, what if was... they like really work on their game, then they'll be Rufus and Doofus. <laughs> I, oh yeah, I think Murphy versus, the, versus Doofus was the one when it was Slaughter Checkmate and the uh, pawn was pinned. Right. Also, oh, yeah. you'll notice in the games we've looked at so far, Black castled every time. No, Morphe's opponents haven't castled yet, have they? Man, truth hurts. Yeah. Morphe yeah. castles a lot. So that's why he doesn't Man, Morphe's pieces are always good. His opponent's pieces are not, not as good. Yeah, yeah the Man. knights are connected. Yeah, whatever you said. You're yeah. up. Okay, then this is also blindfolded. Okay, Morphe was white. E4. Three. C4. Two knights of Halloween. And he castled. He didn't play the Evans Gambit this time. Mm -hmm. F5. This is like the Italian variant. Right. Now, Morphe did it again. He's like, wait a minute. I castled, and you didn't castle. So but there's these E pawns on the board. Let's get rid of those. So he played a move you would never think of to open up the E file. You would never think of it. That's how you know what it is. Knight takes E5. Wow, they really wouldn't think of that. Oh, no. I think E5 is okay, actually. I can take the knight and play D4. Yeah. Oh. D4. What? That that opens up the center, and Black's king is in the center. Yeah. Also, I hooked up my bishop. My bishop could move, and it couldn't move before. All right, so he took. Now, Morphe played a move in Falkbeer counter gambit style, and I'm going to go back and show you. In the king's gambit, an opening you've never heard of. See? This thing called the Falkbeer counter gambit. D5 and E4. Morphe used to play that a lot, and he would checkmate people. Very complicated opening. It stops knight f3. Yeah, okay. but okay. this time he didn't play. So in this game, it was like in reverse. He played here. It's a Falkbeer counter gambit, except black's playing the king's gambit, because black played e5, f5. Okay, And so white's a tempo ahead, because white goes first. So he's playing an opening with black, except he has white, so he has an extra move. Okay, Now, where's black going to castle this game? Is he going to castle through his pieces? It's a trick question. Is he going to castle into check? No, he can't castle either. Yeah, he ain't going to castle this game. Yeah. White, White already castled. So, in my opinion, uh, you can disagree. I'm not a big fan of the move F5. I, I don't like that. Yeah, because it opens. Not, not a big fan. Yeah, because it, op because it closes. 
the king's right to castle. I would play knight f6, and then I would castle. And Morphe would be like, what, you castled? What I never if, faced that. What if, what if he yeah, but seven. John was, seven. was... Then I would be up a bishop. John William didn't castle this game. Can't castle. Darn. <laughs> he got me. Then the engine says I'm up 2.3. Random guess. Pretty grandmasterly, yeah? Yeah, computer's pretty smart. It knows what I said. Yeah, confusing the audience. 2.3. All right, random guess. Okay, so knight f6 and castles, etc. Mainly etc. F5. Okay, so he played d6 because whenever the king's on the e file, the opponent's like, let's open that up for Morphe. Blunder. And then they make a blunder. Okay, takes, opening up the e file. Rookie one check, obviously, frankly. Knight g5 with the idea of knight f7. Very easy to stop. Forking the queen and the... Yeah, you guys are pretty good at defense. How do you stop knight f7 with forking everything? Rook f8. Rook f 8 is better than what he did. After rook f8, I have to decide whether to take this pawn or play queen here check. Tough decision. Oh. Rook f8, in my opinion, is the best move. Good job. He played knight e5, also defending. Okay? But now his queen and knight are lined up on a diagonal. Which piece moves diagonal? The queen. And? The bishop. Yeah, so white played. Queen h5 check. That has not much to do with these two pieces. F4? Yeah, he played bishop f4. Attacking the knight. Wow, Morphe <coughs> moved another piece. Amazing. Morphe moves all of his pieces. And his king is always safe. His opponents, eh, eh. What about the knight on b1? That's coming. All right, so we got to stop taking on e5, right? We should stop that, right? Yeah. What do you do? G6. Knight g6. And then the bishops attack because I said so. So he took. And now this knight's pinned. So Morphe was very confused because every move wins. He's like, should I play knight f7, knight f3, f4, or queen e2? And they all win, right? Because yeah, that knight's right. like super pinned. Yeah, because Morphe right. is such a good player. He's like, wait, every move wins. I'm confused. Also, he's, he's like, blindfolded. He's like, yeah. ah, every move wins in my head. So he played knight f7, one of the four winning moves that I saw. Save the queen. Well, you lose all your pieces. Right? Yeah. Your queen's attacked, your rook's attacked, your knight's attacked. If I take the knight with your with a rook, the bishop's attacked, and you're getting mated. Yeah, and the knight... And, and the knight on e5 can't take no. on there because it's pinned. So white's down a pawn and it says white's plus 10. Man, truth hurts. So every game I showed you today, white Morphe castled, except the French where he didn't. He was too busy winning. And his opponent did not. And whenever his opponent didn't castle, Morphe opened up the lines to his opponent's king. And Morphe's like, why do I even have these pieces? I don't need those. <laughs> right. And what's funny is you can look at dozens and dozens of Morphe games. They all look like this. They look like Morphe's playing good. His opponent's not. And then later in life, when he died and we tried to play better chess, we tried to play like him. Get our pieces out in castle. Now, kids, when I teach them chess, they're like, wait, I can make 30 queen moves in a row. And I'm like, what? How about castling and moving your pieces out? They're like, nah. Okay. So if you look at the top players in the world, the top, you know, like Anon, Kasparov, do they castle and get their pieces out, or do they move their queen every move? They castle. Yeah. So good players play like Morphe. They get all their pieces out. Now, when a good player plays a beginner, it looks like that. But back in the 1800s, there weren't a lot of good players, so all of Morphe's games looked like that. When, when was chess invented? So, so that's a Well, that's game. unclear because the rules changed uh, hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the thing is, if you want to play chess now, 
You could drive to a chess club. You could go to the internet. You could play in a chess tournament. Yeah, but a lot, a lot you could, of You could buy one of our hundreds of chess books. In 1800, you're like, do you play chess? And the guy's like, what's chess? So you're like, well, my dad plays chess. I'm Morphe. I'll play him. Okay? If you wanted to take a plane to a chess tournament, plane wasn't invented yet. If you wanted to drive to a chess tournament, car wasn't invented yet. If you want to go to the internet, internet wasn't invented yet. Right? So how did you play chess back then? You had to find somebody who played chess. Good luck. So a lot of people who played chess weren't very good. Now, Morphy went to Europe, and he played the best players in Europe, and he gave them a simul and beat them, because he's better than them. Then he's like, i got to do something else. This game's too easy. Yeah. You guys are all terrible. Frankly terrible. Right? Yeah. Can you believe that? You know, Hikaru Nakamura would... If Hikaru Nakamura was a baby and came to this position, you would say God got terrible to all of Morphe's opponents. Wait a minute, you're reusing your old material. Terrible. Yeah, but yeah. Hikaru Nakamura wasn't born back then. That's right. Now, who's winning here? White. Yeah, so Black gave up. White is winning a billion so points. Ago. What's that? The game hasn't been in so long ago. Right. Could you say, like... It's like 500 AP. Paul Morgan was the first one to master the game. Philidor was okay, but yeah, I would say Morphe was the first really good player. I, I like really think good. it was a vintage of the Everyone's fight. using his... Idea. Yeah, because if you take lots of Morphe games and put the engine on them, the engine's like, good job. Other people, the engine's like, what? What, what move were you doing? He um, likes yeah. Checks. yeah. Yeah, Morphe yeah. was good. I think it was invented in 1200 AD. There you go. Now, a lot of people are like, rawr, Morphe's no good. But Bobby Fischer said Morphe was the most accurate player who ever lived. Yeah. He and, told you. And, and he wasn't crazy. Yeah, and Bobby Fischer was actually right. Exactly. It's a lot shocking. of the noobs played Paul Morphe and, got, and lost in less than 25 moves. Yeah, all these games were pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, so that's why Morphe didn't get a lot of credit. Yeah. And then when the game was over, Morphe invented a children's show called Barney. I mate you, you don't mate me, you're the worst players in history. Then they changed the lyrics for today's kids. Oh. Yeah, did you know that? No. Oh, that's, the, that's one of the base versions of Disoman. Uh, yeah. Because I played that one set a billion times already. I have a question. What? All right. And as Gene Wilder would say in Young Frankenstein, class is dismissed.